scientists just found the most massive black hole collision ever. Two monster black holes, weighing 103 and 137 times our sun's mass, crashed together 5.7 billion light years away, creating a final black hole 225 times heavier than our sun. Both black holes were spinning at nearly the maximum rate physics allows, rotating hundreds of times per second. That's so fast they were probably the remnants of earlier black hole collisions, making them second or third generation cosmic monsters. The collision surpassed the combined luminosity of all stars in the observable universe combined, but it lasted just 0.1 seconds. This merger happened when our solar system was barely forming, long before life existed on our planet. When these waves finally arrived at LIGO's detectors in Hanford, Washington and Livingston, Louisiana, along with Virgo in Italy and Kagra in Japan, they caused changes in distance smaller than one ten-thousandth the width of a proton. The detectors work by splitting laser beams and sending them down perpendicular arms that are each four kilometers long. When a gravitational wave passes through, it slightly stretches space in one direction while compressing it in the perpendicular direction. The laser interference pattern changes, and scientists can measure these minuscule alterations in space-time itself. But here's what makes this detection absolutely extraordinary. These instruments are so sensitive that they can detect vibrations from cars driving past the facility, earthquakes happening on the other side of the planet, and even the gravitational effects of the moon. The fact that scientists can distinguish the specific signature of two black holes colliding billions of light years away from all that background noise represents one of the greatest technological achievements in human history. The signal from GW2 31123 lasted just 0.1 seconds. But in that brief moment, scientists captured the final death spiral and merger of objects so massive and so distant that they challenge our fundamental understanding of how the universe works. Now here's where this discovery gets really mind-bending. According to our best theories of stellar evolution, there's something called the pair instability mass gap. This is a range of masses roughly between 60 and 130 times the mass of our Sun, where black holes simply cannot form through normal stellar collapse. Here's why. When a very massive star reaches the end of its life, the core becomes so hot and dense that high-energy photons start creating pairs of electrons and positrons. This reduces the radiation pressure supporting the star against its own gravity, causing the core to collapse rapidly. For stars that would normally produce black holes between about 60 and 130 solar masses, this process becomes so violent that it completely destroys the star in what's called a pair instability supernova. Instead of leaving behind a black hole, the entire star gets blown apart, scattering its material into space. Stars massive enough to avoid this fate would create black holes heavier than 130 solar masses but such massive stars are extremely rare and were more common in the early universe when stellar formation was different. So when scientists detected two black holes with masses of 103 and 137 solar masses merging together, it was like finding a species of animal that evolutionary biology says should be impossible. Both of these black holes sit squarely in the forbidden zone they're too massive to have formed from single stellar collapse, but they're not massive enough to be the supermassive black holes we find at galactic centers. This discovery changes what we think about black hole formation and evolution. It's like the rules of physics have loopholes that we never knew existed. The most likely explanation is that these black holes themselves are the products of earlier mergers. They're second-generation, or even third-generation, black holes, formed when smaller black holes crashed together in the distant past. The clue that these are second-generation black holes comes from their spins. Both black holes were rotating at nearly the theoretical maximum rate, with spin parameters very close to one. When a massive star collapses to form a black hole, the resulting object typically has a relatively modest spin because stellar cores don't rotate that rapidly. But when two black holes merge, the orbital angular momentum of their death spiral 
gets converted into the spin of the final black hole. The extreme spins detected suggest that both black holes had already been through at least one previous merger. They're the cosmic descendants of earlier collisions, carrying the rotational signatures of their violent family history. But this raises a fascinating question. Where do these hierarchical mergers happen? In the sparse environment of normal space, black holes are incredibly unlikely to encounter each other. The average density of matter in the universe is so low that black holes could wander for trillions of years without ever meeting another black hole. This is pointing scientists toward much denser environments where black holes are more likely to find each other. The centers of globular clusters, which can contain hundreds of thousands of stars, packed into a relatively small space, are prime candidates. Another possibility is the chaotic environment around supermassive black holes at galactic centers. Here, stellar mass black holes could be captured into orbits, interact with each other, and undergo multiple mergers over cosmic time. Think of it like a cosmic family tree. The first generation black holes formed from single massive stars. Some of these found each other and merged to create second generation black holes with higher masses and spins. Then these second generation monsters found other partners and merged again, creating even more massive third generation black holes. GW231123 might be showing us the end result of this hierarchical merger process, revealing black holes that have grown far beyond what single stars could ever produce. Let's zoom in on what actually happened during those 0.1 seconds that our detectors captured because the physics involved is absolutely staggering. By the time LIGO detected the gravitational waves, these two black holes had been spiraling toward each other for potentially millions of years, gradually losing energy and tightening their orbit. During the final moments, they were whipping around each other at significant fractions of the speed of light. Near the very end, they were completing multiple orbits per second, each weighing over 100 times more than our sun. When they finally touched and began to merge, the collision created a highly distorted, rapidly oscillating object that was no longer two separate black holes, but wasn't yet a stable single black hole either. This newly formed black hole was extremely distorted, kind of like a spinning football, but black holes can't maintain non-spherical shapes. The laws of general relativity demand that they settle into perfect spheres, this settling process, called ring down, is literally the black hole ringing like a cosmic bell that's been struck with unimaginable force. The frequency and damping rate of these oscillations encode information about the final black hole's mass and spin, which is how scientists determined that the merger produced a 225 solar mass monster. But here's the truly mind-blowing part. During the peak of this collision, the power output in gravitational waves was approximately 10 to the 49th watts. That's more energy per second than the combined light output of every star in the observable universe. For those brief moments, this single event was the brightest thing in the universe. Not in visible light, but in gravitational waves. It was like a cosmic lighthouse beacon that could be detected by sufficiently sensitive instruments anywhere in the universe. Yet all of this unimaginable violence and energy release was compressed into just one-tenth of a second. The entire final merger, from first contact to ring down, happened faster than a human blink. This discovery is forcing us to confront some profound implications about the universe we live in and how it has evolved over cosmic time. First, if black holes in the mass gap can exist and merge, it suggests that our galaxy and others might be filled with intermediate mass black holes that we haven't detected yet. These objects could be lurking in globular clusters, in galactic outskirts, or in dense, stellar environments that we haven't thoroughly studied. Second, the detection of such a massive merger implies that the process of hierarchical black hole growth might be much more common than we previously thought. This could help explain how some supermassive black holes grew so large so quickly in the early universe. 
Instead of starting as tiny seeds that slowly accrete matter over billions of years, maybe some supermassive black holes formed through cascades of mergers, growing rapidly from stellar mass to intermediate mass to supermassive monsters. Third, this discovery is revealing that dense stellar environments are cosmic factories for producing these extreme mergers. Globular clusters, galactic nuclei, and other high-density regions might be churning out impossible black holes on a regular basis. With around 300 black hole mergers now detected through gravitational waves, GW231123 represents something special. It's not just another data point. It's a glimpse into cosmic processes that operate on scales of violence and energy that stretch our imagination. But perhaps, most importantly, this is just the beginning. Next generation gravitational wave detectors will be even more sensitive, able to probe deeper into space and further back in cosmic time. The Cosmic Explorer and Einstein Telescope projects will be able to detect mergers from when the universe was just a few hundred million years old, potentially revealing the very first generation of black holes and how they began the process of hierarchical growth. We might soon be able to trace the complete evolutionary history of black holes from the cosmic dark ages to the present day, watching how these monsters grew and shaped the galaxies around them. So, what do you think this discovery means for our understanding of cosmic evolution? Could hierarchical black hole mergers be the key to explaining how supermassive black holes formed so early in cosmic history? And what other gravitational wave surprises might be waiting for us as our detectors become more sensitive? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more mind-bending discoveries from the frontiers of astrophysics.